If you're wondering how many ETFs you should have in your portfolio, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the most used strategies, for which kind of investor they are suited, and I'm also going to give you the exact ETFs that you should own, both if you invest for the US and for Europe. My name is Rick, welcome to my investing channel, and now let's get right to the first method. The first strategy is the minimalist strategy. For this simple portfolio, you just need one or two broad-based ETFs. This makes it really simple, and to get diversification with just two ETFs, you're commonly going to have one broad market ETF, such as the total stock market, and one bond ETF, which is there to balance risk, because it gives you exposure to fixed income, which is different from the equity market of stocks. This portfolio is good for first-time investors, and generally speaking, for investors who want to participate in broad market growth without getting the headache of choosing specific ETFs or managing many funds. The first and biggest position is going to be VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF. VTI is going to give you access to almost 4,000 companies, representing the whole American stock market in its entirety, with an expense ratio of just 0.03%, and thanks to fractional shares that allow you to buy even just $10 of this ETF. With a couple of bucks, you automatically become the owner of a little piece of all the wonderful companies that make up the American stock market. You are going to own great names like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, and many, many more. An alternative to VTI is VO, the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard, which instead includes only the biggest 500 companies of the economy and gives pretty much the same returns as VTI. If you invest from Europe, the alternative is VUAA, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 UCITS ETF. The second ETF is going to be BND, the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund ETF. BND is going to give you easy access to the whole American bond market, which is a really important component of a portfolio because it's going to give you stability stability and fixed income for a ridiculously low expense ratio of 0.03%. There is not a direct alternative for Europe, but you can go for something like the iShares Core Global Aggregate Bond UCITS ETF, ticker AGGH. So summarizing, for the US you're going to have VTI and BND, while for Europe you're going to have VUAA and AGGH. The percentage of bonds compared to the total stock market ETF is going to depend on your risk tolerance and your age. You could have a percentage that is equal to your age, minus 10. So if you're 50 years old, for example, you're going to have 40% in bonds. But the truth is that there is not a magical number. If you still have at least 20 years of work in front of you, you could even decide to have zero bonds. But if you are 50 or 60 and you're getting close to retirement, you really need to consider bonds because without an income, you're going to need a more stable portfolio. To help you with rebalancing your portfolio every year based on how the two components grow and your age, of course, I prepared for you a Google file that you can get for free from the link in the description below. Let's move now to the second strategy, the core satellite approach. This is the one I use personally, and mind, it doesn't have to mean it's the right one, but it basically involves building a core position using a broad market ETF and supplementing it with smaller, more focused satellite ETFs. The core is usually a broad-based ETF covering US or global stocks, for example, VTI or VO. The satellites can be smaller positions in specific sectors or geographies, for example, technology, emerging markets, or dividend-focused ETFs. This strategy is a balance between simplicity on one hand and active choice is on the other. It allows you to tilt your portfolio towards something you particularly believe in while maintaining a diversified core. I have to say though, most investors use this method but they don't really know how to do it. So they end up focusing too much in the sector that went best in the last decade. For example, technology now, which for the long term is not necessarily a problem, but the thing is, they can't handle stock market crashes. So if you use this method, you absolutely need to have a long-term strategy. You need to have the stomach for it, and you also need to do your own research. Part of which, of course, is using my channel. So subscribe to it if you want interesting finance and investing videos every week from the twin of Manu Ginobili. Now, for the core satellite strategy, I'm gonna give you a portfolio that is going to be made of five ETFs. The core position is still going to be the total stock market with VTI, or alternatively, VO, which is the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard. The S&P 500, despite including only the largest and best 500 companies in the American economy, and not the whole 4,000, historically grew in the same way as the total stock market, with an average annual return of around 10.5% from 1970 
to today. As of the percentage, you should have at least 30% on the core position of the portfolio. For Europe, it's a bit trickier. So first, let me tell you the ETF number two for the US, and then we'll get to Europe. The ETF number two, with around 25%, is there to cover the international stock market. With an ETF, like VXUS, the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. You're going to cover emerging markets, Europe, Pacific, Middle East, and North America, giving you really the greatest geographical diversification you're going to need. If you want to put together the US markets and the international markets, you can go for VT, the Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund ETF. This is valid for US investors. If instead you invest from Europe, you choose VWC, the Vanguard FTC All World UCITS ETF. As you can see, for the US you have the choice to have two separate ETFs, VTI and VXUS, or one world ETF, VT. For Europe instead, you don't have a good clean option without US. So it's better to just go for the world ETF with VWC. Moving to positions number three and four, with around 20% and 15%, you're going to have a growth ETF and a value ETF. Since we are already investing in the total stock market or in the S&P 500 in our core position, obviously, these two ETFs are going to strongly overlap with it. For the growth sector, I suggest something like QQQM, the Invesco Nasdaq 100 ETF, which gives you access to the 100 greatest growth companies. For value, you can get a nice dividend ETF like VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. VYM gives you the great exposure to the large value sector with a nice dividend yield of 3.15% per year. Alternatively, you can go for VTV, which is the Vanguard Value ETF, or stay on the dividend ETFs with VAG or SHG. If you invest from Europe, a direct alternative to QQQM is EQQQ, while a good value ETF would be the Vanguard FTSC All World High Dividend Yield UCITS ETF, with ticker VGWD. The last portion of this portfolio with 10% is going to be the bond market with BND, or AGGH for Europe. Summarizing, for the US, you're going to have VTI, VXUS, QQQM, VYM, BND. For Europe, you're going to have VWCE, EQQQ, QQQ, VGWD, and AGGH. Strategy number three is the sector or specialized approach. This means holding several ETFs to gain targeted exposure to specific sectors, industries, or asset classes. You may have sector ETFs like healthcare, energy, or technology, regional or country-specific ETFs like Europe, Asia, or individual countries like Japan, and thematic ETFs, for example, clean energy or artificial intelligence. Using this method, you may end up having eight or 10 ETFs or even more. This method is more complex, it requires you to have much more knowledge about the stock market and doesn't guarantee better results. In fact, in many cases, you end up with a lower performance than the general stock market if you don't choose wisely. Nevertheless, you can also achieve much higher returns if you choose well. In my personal opinion, a portfolio shouldn't have more than five, six ETFs so I'm not really a great fan of this method. Usually, this strategy is used by investors who want more control of their portfolio and believe in the potential of certain industries or regions. To give you an example of this portfolio, let's just take the portfolio explained before and add a couple of new ETFs. You're going to have 20% VOO, covering the large cap American stock market, 15% VXUS, covering the international stock market, 15% on growth with QQQM, and 15% on value with VYM. 10 on bonds with BND, which as I said, should grow the older you get to reduce volatility. And then you could be interested, for example, in artificial intelligence and have 10% in AIQ, the Global X Artificial Intelligence and Technology ETF. The remaining 15% could go to mid cap and small cap companies. So 10% goes to mid cap companies through VO, the Vanguard mid cap ETF, and 5% to small cap companies with VB, the Vanguard small cap ETF. For Europe, the portfolio would look like this. VWCE with 35%, EQQQ with 15%, VGWD with 15%, AGGH with 10%, and then obviously it depends on your interest, but staying on the topic of AI, a good choice is IRBO, the iShares Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF with 10%, and then SPY4 with 10% for mid cap, and IUSN with 5% for small cap. Now, as you can see, 
more ETFs make everything more complicated. If you know a lot about the stock market and its cycles, you may profit from overweighting on particular segments or even on small cap or mid cap. Usually though, you're better off with just a simple portfolio. So you're totally free to make your portfolio as complicated as you wish, but if your friend with a one ETF portfolio earns more than you, don't say I didn't tell you so. Another interesting approach is the barbell strategy. It's called like this because you just invest in two types of ETFs at the extremes of the risk spectrum. One portion of the portfolio will be in high risk, high return ETFs like growth stocks or emerging markets, and another in low risk, stable ETFs like bond or dividend focused ETFs. You can usually build a portfolio with this strategy with two ETFs, but it can also be three or four. Important is that you should try to have about 50% of the weight in high risk ETFs and 50% of the weight in the low risk ones. The idea is that the high risk side provides growth potential, while the low risk side offers protection during downturns. This strategy sounds really clever, but you might argue that you can just get a better balance between high risk and low risk by simply investing in the total stock market or in the S&P 500. So I personally don't suggest it. Anyway, an example of this strategy would be investing 50% in a tech ETF like VGT, the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, and 50% in a dividend ETF like SHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. The European alternatives would be QDVE for technology and VGWD for dividends. Strategy number five is that of geographic diversification. This philosophy focuses on diversifying across multiple regions or countries using multiple ETFs. It typically includes domestic ETFs such as US stock market ETFs and international ETFs, covering developed markets outside the US as well as emerging markets. It increases diversification but adds complexity in tracking exposure. You can have this portfolio using two ETFs, and that would be with VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF that covers the US market, and VXUS, the Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. With this, you're going to cover emerging markets, Europe, Pacific, Middle East, and North America, giving you a great geographical diversification. If you prefer using only one ETF, for the US, you'd have VT, and for Europe, VWC. Some investors opt for another strategy that involves one single ETF that is designed to automatically adjust its asset allocation over time. This kind of ETF is called Target Date Fund or Target Date Retirement Fund. Target Date Funds adjust the asset mix between stocks and bonds as the investor nears retirement or a target date. So the closer you are to retirement, the more the ETF is going to give way to bonds and less to equities. I made a whole video about target date funds because there is so much to say about them and also compare them to investing in the S&P 500. So I'm not gonna talk in detail about it here. If you want to see it, you can just watch this video later and I'm gonna link it here and in the description below. This approach is ideal for investors who want a set it and forget it solution. It rebalances automatically and you don't have to think about anything. Generally speaking, when choosing how many ETFs you want, you need to consider this. Simple doesn't mean bad, just as advanced doesn't mean better. If you are new to investing, or even if you're not new and you want to have great returns without headache, probably you should limit your portfolio to not more than 3-4 ETFs. Anything more than that is going to increase volatility and can give you better results, but also make you lose a lot of money. If this video was interesting, be nice and drop a beautiful like to support my small channel. If you do, one day I'm gonna be able to earn something from this and maybe invest more time into creating valuable content for you. Requests aside, I wish you a great day everyone, have a blast and as always I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!